Hello everyone, welcome to the video. What I'm going to be showing you today is me sort of doing the sort of glory part of this wardrobes that I've been building. Uh, they're built-in wardrobes and what I've got is uh, sliding wardrobe doors. Talk about those in a minute. Uh, just going to go through a, a few things, how we've got to the stage right now. And what I think I'm going to do, um, which I don't normally do, is I can actually tell you, uh, give you an idea of how much all of this lot cost. Um, been quite surprised. I don't actually know how much it is, but probably not as much as you think. Um, it's a kind of a hybrid system. So what I've done is obviously I've framed these uh, openings out. We've got, I'll just turn this camera around, look. We've got two openings here to utilise the space in this bedroom. Uh, we've got three sets of uh, sliding wardrobe doors going on here. Uh, and we've got another three set, uh, three sliding wardrobe doors going on here. And then there's a sort of walkthrough. Uh, this is a little extension. There's a walkthrough and we've got another uh, set of double uh, these are two foot wide doors. So uh, just quickly talk to you about these wardrobe doors. These are sort of, not so, a, st a fairly standard sliding wardrobe door. They all come pretty much in the same range of sizes. So the doors, uh, they're pretty much mirror the Imperial, I mean it's metric, but the Imperial size doors we have here in the UK. So you can get them two foot wide, two foot three wide and two foot six wide. So that's the denomination of which you get. The company, uh, I will leave a link in the description. I'll try to, not very good at computers. Try and leave a link in the description below to the company I got these from. Um, and then, so you have your, your openings are multiples of two foot, two foot three, or two foot six. And then they uh, recommend, I can't remember what it was, like a 35 mil overlap. I've made the overlap slightly smaller here because these doors that we've gone for um, have got a thinner, uh, narrow, uh, thinner style on them, rail on them. Um, these were slightly more expensive again I'll talk about that in the end because there was a lot more choice to have gone for like a we've gone for some mirrored um, and some with this smoked glass and they've got this sort of bar in them as well so there's different ranges with that supplier the more basic ranges are cheaper but if you want more choice of stuff you know you pay more money uh, as you can imagine standard height on all these is from my uh, research is two meters, 260 millimeters. So that is the measurement from the top, where the top rail sits down to the bottom. Now, again, something I'll talk about here, what I've done here, and I've done a few of these wardrobes now, had a lot of head scratching and a lot of uh, unpacking these doors, mocking them up in the roller so that I got, and we'll hopefully see it, hopefully it will work later. I've put this bit of, I've got this bit of, uh, oak faced MDF from my local builders merchants cheap so we'll put that in the bottom what that does it allows something for the carpet to butt into but this is the bottom track you see it also allows the bottom track to fit nicely like that so that we don't see any of the you know the edge of the timber also a lot of I had to put a lot of effort and work into making sure once this head rail was on put a door in and then I had to mock it up onto this rail here and then get a pencil mark so that I could return the skirting round. Obviously the skirting can't come into this reveal here because the door's gonna hit it, obviously. So lots of things to think about. I'm hoping it's all gonna come together. So as I said, the height for here is uh, two meters, 260 millimeters. Again, I've made, I've cut this down slightly. So this is about two meters, 250 millimeters. There's still plenty of adjustment on these doors and I didn't want, the adjustment is all at the bottom, I didn't want to have to adjust them up more than I needed, so there's more of a gap at the bottom. So, also, so that's the doors. Now, as you can see here, look, we've got these sort of uh, MFC, Melamine Face Chipboard units made up. Now, my buddy, Ryan, who's got a kitchen company, whose kitchens I have shown me fitting on my channel, they're, they're in my channel somewhere if you want to see them. Uh, it's nice to have friends in the know, because what he's basically done is he's got me uh, he's got his supplier who makes his units and so make me up these sort of cubby hole units because um, the we need to maximize space so these are quite thin as you see here these are only sort of 230 or that's 270 that's 230 and that is to go in this little thin space here because it's only a thin space but customers basically decided that we'd better to try and utilize it um, certainly they're wide enough to get you know shoes and little jumpers and stuff in so so we've got these two frames made to exactly the right size again 
hopefully, hope it's not gonna be too boring, you'll see that one is narrower than the other, and this is all part of my planning to hopefully one of these three doors that fits in the center of these three will end up butting up to the side of this, which will basically create a stop so that the door parks itself. And the third part of um, the third part of this sort of sort of the three components is I've also got an IKEA. So I've designed this as well to fit with an IKEA drawer unit because my buddy could get me uh, a drawer unit uh, to match this carcassing, but it was really, really, really expensive. You know, I don't need top of the top of the range Blum or Salishi push to open soft closed drawers in here. So off to IKEA we went and they've got a perfectly sized carcass that you can fit in. You can adapt it as ever, however you like. Uh, a perfectly sized carcass which will fit in, you'll see, only going to fit in one side of these triple door wardrobe. And that's got seven drawers in it again. I'll talk about how much it was at the end, but it was significantly cheaper. Not the same colour I know, and you might say, well, you know, it's like a rainbow of colours. It isn't really. We bought, this is all uh, colour matched oak to the doors. Um, and the drawer unit's going to go in here is like a beige colour. So not particularly pressure, pressed about that. More pressure about the fact it saved me about 1,600 quid in draw units. So, I've waffled a lot. First thing we're going to do is measure these openings accurately, top and bottom. We've got three to do. And then we can, we've got a bottom track here. I've got obviously longer ones downstairs. Bottom track here. We've got a top track here. This is the top track. And what I've got to do is very carefully cut these. I'm going to put a thin slitting blade in the disc cutter and try that. Obviously we can't make too much heat because we don't want to burn this. If it looks like it's going to get hot, I'll go to the, uh, I'll go back to the hacksaw. But anyway, let's get on. Yep, that's lovely look. No burning there. Perfect. Excellent. Nice clean cut there. Just a tiny bear on there. Just maybe knock that off with a file. Excellent. So that's all of those top and bottom rails cut now and I've pre-drilled them now. It'd be really tempting to go for glory and put them in and get the doors in, but then I have to take the doors off again because we need to now look at these liners here. This first set of liners are unwrapped. Now, again, because these were these came from a, a company that makes kitchen units, they basically, these units think they're going in the kitchen. So I think probably by autopilot or, or whatever software the kitchen company's got, they put uh, legs on them. So basically what I've done, this one's upside down. I've nipped all their legs off. They're not screwed on. They're only gone these little dowels. Look. So uh, taking those ones off there, take these ones off here, and then we can stand them up into this area here you'll basically what we're looking at is we've got one tall unit that goes to the left hand side then a lower unit that goes uh, for the other two sort of cavities or the rest of the wardrobe and then not 100 sure about the hardware we're going to use up there that'd be like some sort of forward facing hanging hardware but we're not sure about that yet so anyway let's get these stood up in here and see if all of my thinking and planning is going to come together when i put them in need to be careful standing it up because because it's so narrow it's got no backing we need to maximize the width of this little thin wardrobe so uh, it doesn't need a back once it's in there right here we go uh, and as I, I think I showed earlier there's another bit of that veneered MDF in the bottom of which this will sit straight on so here we go That's one in. Now for the moment of truth, hopefully this one should be wide enough to fit the rest of the gap. Not that I'm doubting it, but I'm gonna check the measurement. Should be 15, 15 from memory. 
on the angle, I've got to lift it above the skirting. additional shelving I've got as well which I've got out this behind here somewhere yeah I've got some additional shelving out of the same stuff to make a shelf over some hanging rails and that one yeah Woo. so far so good right the IKEA unit's done hopefully I haven't angered some Swedish god look that guy he's got a frowny face because he's on his own look but when there's two of you look both happy so I've done it on my own but I'm smiling so that's the IKEA unit all together. Now, I haven't stood it up because what I've got to do now, and I'll quickly explain to you the sort of intricacies of what I'm trying to do here. This unit here is wider than these other units. And what that's going to do is A, make a wider storage space, but also when this centre door slides this way, it's going to hit this and it's going to form a stop. Obviously, this door here, because it sits on the outside edge of the track, shoots past. But as you can see here, look, these units here have got to sit on top of this track. I'm obviously not going to cut that track round it because then if we ever changed our minds here, um, you, you know, your track's no good. So that's about nine mil. I've got some nine mil rips of ply I'm going to put on under this unit to jack it up. And I shall put under this unit back here to jack it up so that that bottom track can go underneath it. So I'll get those ripped up now, get those put in place, and then we can stand this unit in as well. I just whipped this tool unit out just to show you this bit of nine mil ply you can see. Obviously the track comes all the way along here. Uh, that nine mil ply sits behind it. So this unit will sit on top of that. Not worried about supporting at the back because obviously it's falling against that wall and we'll put a few fixings in there. Uh, and I'll just show you here, just so you can see what we're doing. Exactly the same over here, look. Uh, the width of this IKEA unit is 750, so I've just measured out 750 to the outside edge of that ply. Obviously what that then allows, look, it allows this track with a bit of movement, that track can sit along there, and then this unit can sit over it. It looks like I've made a mistake, but we're only using for this end door here that goes across the front of this drawer unit here, it's only, we're only using the outside track. So what we can do now, stand that back in, stand this in, and then we'll have a look at the shelving that I've got to go up the side of it. That's the IKEA carcass. We've also got seven drawers to go in there, which I'll put in in a bit, build and put in a bit. As you can see here, that bit of nine mil ply now has allowed that uh, the bottom track to slide all the way under there. What I've also done here is when I built this nib wall in here, I on this side I put a solid piece of ply in between so I can get a decent fixing. So that's all fixed back. Right. So the next part of this puzzle is these two bits of MFC here. Now, these are exactly the right width between this back wall and the back side of this nib. One is 1.9 meters high. 
which is going to go is a central divider and you see that's a central divider in there and the other one is just a cell shelf to sit on top and also here i've got some smaller bits of 75 mil mfc there which i should just use as a sort of bearer to go around under it so what i'm going to do get this tall shelf put it up against here put a pencil mark here obviously um find its central location not quite sure i'm going to fix it maybe obviously the top shelf will be screwed down to it maybe a little bit of adhesive on the back wall and then obviously um we've got that support like i said on that side so yeah that's the next thing to do so this all of this work is being done on a new build extension so i know the floor is super level because i put it in so I'm not going to worry too much about leveling this. I'm just going to put it here, this one. I'll just put a pencil mark on it. And then when this shelf goes on, I shall screw it through the back. Um, and then I presume it's just going to be, we can lay them down like that. Put a little mark for the centre there. You can also just lay it in there. Get a mark for that. It should technically fit in there. If I measure it too. Oh, 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 dream time. Yeah, so I'll just mark that across there as well. Excellent. Now, I'll just divide this space into two. Um, get this little off cuts here, not I mentioned. Uh, divide this space into two, cut these, uh, fix one, put that against the side of it. Uh, shall I do that? Or I could maybe put this in in one and maybe notch the back out. Yeah, because then this could be moved if I wanted to, or potentially another one could go in if, if so needed. So, yeah, I think I'll put this in in one and cut a tiny notch out of the back of that. Nice. The other thing is I'm hoping I ordered these exactly the right size because I knew what my opening was here. I knew this was 750mm wide, so let's have a look and see if... I'm being excited now, look. Really quickly to get a knife in it. Yeah, so let's see if that's still the right size. Should be, should be. Oh, it's a tiny bit long. Okay, no problem. Got my chops all set up downstairs. Just wheeze maybe a couple of mil off it. And should be. The other bit should be exactly the right width as well, but yeah, I'll just take a tiny bit off that. Nice, right, that's those in. What I've done here, although I said potentially we could put other dividers in if we wanted to, uh, I've actually put a screw dead centre here. Um, I'm going to get some caps, so I've got some oak caps to cover the others, but this dead centre screw will be covered by the centre divider. I've marked, I've used this to mark on the back of the centre divider. I'm going to cut a tiny little bit out, then we can drop the centre divider in, and then hopefully we can see if that shell fits. Fit that down through the top here, put a couple of screws in along the back and in that side of that IKEA unit there. But yeah, it's all coming together. I've cut the little notch out of this upright panel but we don't need to put that in a minute what i need to do now is check this top uh shelf fits now as suspected because i had to cut a tiny bit off the back of this one obviously i've done my measurements from the front obviously when this has been dot and dabbed here it's it's kicked out slightly in the corner which basically means that you can just see there it's slightly out of square so we're right at the front it's just that few mil the few mil that I had to cut off the back of this one i'm gonna have to cut off that back corner there so no problem at all obviously better being slightly long being able to trim it than being short so i'll just whiz that sort of four mil to nothing off the back of there and that's going to drop in there a treat yes that's brilliant oh yes right i've put a couple of holes through the end of this unit here before i put that on so we'll just three screws in the end there put a couple down the back in there and obviously, this centre divider basically is going to go 
this wherever good. That sends the bottom. It's going to go there. Put some screws down through the top. Don't know. Maybe a maybe a dowel or something down the bottom, so you can't see it. But there's little scotches go all the way around the bottom there. That'll hold it as well. So. Maybe a tiny bit of adhesive on the back there, but I don't want to use adhesive if I can help it, just in case we need to change, uh, you know, change it around. But it's looking really good, really happy with that. I know that's slightly different colour, but as I said, significantly cheaper than getting a drawer unit made out of this stuff. So that's all those liners in. I've just got, it's, it's fairly simple stuff I've left off here, obviously. The hanging rails to go in there. I'm going to make these drawers up and they just clip in. They're all sort of stood in place. I've only got to put a couple of screws to screw them together. Uh, so the exciting bit now is they're going to start to actually put these doors in. It shouldn't take long because we've done all the prep. We cut the rails, drilled them. Should just be a case of fixing the top rail, putting the bottom rail on, uh, snapping the doors in, and then we just move the bottom rail in and out until they're exactly plumb, uh, and then adjust them. So we've got uh, three to do. Hang on, we've got three. Three to do in this cavity, in this wardrobe. Three to do in this wardrobe. And then there's two to do in this one here. Not 100% sure what's going on with this one yet. I think there's going to be some sort of forward, because it's not very wide, you see. Um, again, it was the decision was made it would be better to put some sort of storage in here than nothing. Um, and these doors are mirrored as well. And I don't want to turn this light out here. But there's no sort of natural light in there, but there is a lighting splay. So, um, you know, we put mirror doors on there that will bounce a bit more light around. So, so yeah, let's get all those rails fixed and start getting some of these doors on. Right, so I'm gonna split this video into two parts because it's gonna get really, really long. So that's the end of this part where we put all of the sort of innards in and the shelves and the um, cubby holes and everything. Join me for the next part where we'll be putting the doors in and at the end, I'll tell you how much the whole lot costs. Uh, I hope you found this part interesting and thanks for watching.